I'm the skeptical member of the team, but I've been talking with uh, my co-producer, Dale Stevens, and he and I have seen the exact same thing at different times in different places. So I would describe it almost in a science fiction sense as if a door opened, so, like this, you know, kind of a door opened, a shape formed. Uh, it was totally black and surrounded by the night sky, which is, is slightly il illuminated from a town off in this direction, I guess. And then as, as soon as it was there, it was, it was gone. It's a little stable there, it's uh, interesting to have a look in there and there's a history board on the side about the site as well. Right, well, hopefully. Oh, Steve's already here. Oh yeah, it's Steve Mary. Right side. Okay, left side will do. Right. All right, well let's get out, say hello to Steve and have a look-see at Shocklack Church. Hey Steve. Hi guys. Hey Steve. Good to see you again. Welcome to Shock Black. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you again. Hey. Morning, Mr. Merritt. Hey, Dave. All right. <laughs> so has anything paranormal happened to you while you've been waiting for us? Uh, no, not at the moment, but uh, if you have a look around, get oh. our stuff out. All right. Check Fantastic. the place out. Well, let, give us the grand tour first, and then we'll pull this stuff out and set Certainly, everything yeah. up. Yeah. Tell you what's what. Yeah. No problem. All right, guys. Great. Let's go have a look. Uh, you're talking circa about the 13th century for the, the building of the... the um, the church. The original part, as you can see, uh, on the left-hand side is a lot older than there was an addition. It was a small church and needed an addition. So yeah. you've never been here before? No, this is my first time. This is a, ah. uh, I'm aware of its uh, the so-called experiences that have been reported here over the years. Right. Um, time slips, apparitions, and that's good enough to uh, to draw my attention. <laughs> but you're, you're the expert. Oh, sorry, Dave. No, I'm not an expert. You're the one with a great deal of experience here. Yeah, I've been coming here now for 10 years, uh, hours-wise. You're probably looking at uh, three-figured hours spent at the time, spent at the site. Uh, you're talking 50-plus visits. I, I come here alone because I like the location, I like the uh, tranquility, so uh, away from the paranormal, that is. So you were saying that there are um, a couple of questions. You were telling me earlier there's a wow entrance, as you call it. Yeah, I, I would suggest that... The entrance, what we're near now, if you entered this gate rather than the gate we entered previously, there's more of a wow factor when you when you first enter the site, come through the trees, come through the gate, which is uh, the old English swing right. gate that you have to bend round a bit. You see the church for the first time and it, it, it's wow, it hits you straight away. And a couple, let's go through a couple of things about the church, the experiences that, that you, the UPIA, have had here. Um, let's start with the, uh, the little... Um, the little girl, the time slip. Yeah, we uh, we come to the site. Uh, it was the, my colleague's first time, and he brought his daughter along with him as well. Uh, we wanted to discuss something away from the pioneers of Charles, so we walked to the rear of the church. Uh, at that point, we stopped. He lit a cigarette. Uh, he took one drag of it. We asked her to run away. She ran from behind the church. As she went round one corner of the church, she automatically appeared around the corner closest to us straight away within an instance. And I'm probably talking for an eight-year-old child to run that distance, anything up to 30 seconds. And in terms of audible disturbances, what have you been noticing here? I think probably uh, in, in, in involving the UPIA in particular, we've done several uh, long periods of time at the site. And right at the end of one of the last uh, instances, we, we were actually stood in a location where five UPI investigators were huddled together. We, at the end of any investigation, we give people free time, go where you want, uh, do what you want, basically. And the five investigators were stood at this location and heard the sound of horses neighing and the hooves along the roadside. Now, that might not sound like anything. We're surrounded by fields, but the fields were empty. We had a million watt candle powered torch. We checked the fields. There was nothing of consequence in the field. 
but in a historical document, and we're talking dated back to the 1800s, there's actually um, a report of the Brayton funeral cortege, and obviously at the time it's not going to be hearses, it's got to be horse-drawn carriages, etc., coming down the site, and that's supposed to be an anniversary ghost. It's supposed to take place certain times of the year. After David finished relating some of the stories of paranormal activity at Shocklack, we all split up and went in different directions to explore the site on our own. As I was moving along the side of the church, I felt compelled to move into a remote corner of the grounds. Turning back towards the church, I was overcome with a sense that we were not alone. For whatever reason, this corner interested me. I walked up through and nothing was, obviously there was nothing going on, but I was standing in that area and I turned and I looked at the rest of the, the, the church, the building, and nothing happened, but it felt like something was going on. And in my mind, I literally thought the words, something's, something's happening. It was, a, it was an emotional response that with, with, something's happening. With all honesty, you have just described to me word for word exactly the same as many, many other, well, not many, many, I'm not talking tens, I'm talking three, four, five people have said word for word. There's something else going on something here. Something else happening. There's something else. It's like uh, there's a curtain and there's something else beyond the curtain. And I can't. Place. I can't see it. But Harry Potter esque. Yeah, but I can feel it. And uh, I, I mean, it was, I wasn't frightened or scared or anything. I was just. It was without a doubt. I can't see it, but I know. It's pers it's, it's one of the personal events that I've, I've described. <laughs> The sun was starting to set, so Paul, Steve and Dave went back to the parking lot to set up some of the gear. I stayed behind to take some pictures of the church. It was only a few minutes later that the unbelievable happened. Hi Holly. Hey. I believe you've had an experience. Something unusual? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm laughing because I'm awkward and uncomfortable. <laughs> FYI. Okay. Um, What's happened then? Uh, I was taking pictures of some stuff. I took a picture of this, uh -huh. for whatever reason, this window right over here. And then clear as anything, I heard, I heard the horse's hooves. You heard horse's hooves? I heard the horse's hooves. And I thought that was laughable <laughs> because yeah, we've heard yeah. so much, the horse's hooves, the horse's yeah, hooves. Yeah. But, and it wasn't somewhere off in the distance. It wasn't like- Would you quite close? Please. It sounded like it was a boat. It was just on the other side of these, this tree line here. And I right. thought for sure, that there must have been a horse there. There must have been a hard surface because it sounded like a hard surface. The horse hooves, I heard it for about a, a second and a half to two seconds. Um, the clop clop of the horse's hooves and almost what I would have at the time I was thinking that sounds like a carriage, like a wheel, a wheel on the surface as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was so clear and so distinct and so close that I, I, had, to, I had to come down here. Right. And I never took my, my eyes off the site from where I heard it and it was, right through here. So you went over to check? I went over to check because I, I, I honestly, I couldn't believe that there wouldn't be anything there. Well, I think, I think really what was running down the side here is pretty much just um, a mud path. Oh, it's mud. It's mud and there's a cow field right there. And I thought, yeah. sure, it's the cows, but don't cows don't have, no. <laughs> cows don't have horseshoes. I don't believe there's any horses in the vicinity at No, all. and I think Dave's actually gone off to check to see yeah. if there is anything there. I mean, it was, it wasn't, somewhere off well, the distance, like I said, it was It's very interesting right there. that you've said that because we've had the same things reported in the same location before. This location? This location. Seriously, this location? Seriously, this location. And we've also done the same thing. We've, we've been out to investigate, see if there's any horses around. There is no horses here. Um, you're going to have to travel a good three or four miles to, to, to find any horses. There's, there actually is no um, concrete paving or cobblestones down the oh, side I, here. I can it, it, if you actually go up to the fence and look over, you can clearly see it's just a mud track. So Steve, just to clarify, we're, we're surrounded by fields. Yes. This location. This, this particular location is exactly the same place where horses um, have been heard before. It's very interesting that you mentioned it's it. It's very disconcerting to hear something that's not there. When Ghost Cases returns, the sun sets at Shocklack Church as Holly and I begin one of our most exciting investigations ever. As 
darkness descends on Shocklack Church, Holly and I start our investigation. Well, you know, chips in the back. It took me a while, but with a chips in the back. Yeah. All right. Let's let's go through this Dave as fast as we can. Just going to go over what we're doing here. So we've got our DVR cameras have been set up. But no, no, no. You told me you were giving it to me. Huh? You said you were giving it to me. We'll talk. Okay. So. Our DVR cameras are set up, uh, but what are we looking at? What have you set up? All right, we've got five different locations. The first one, which is obviously the main screen, exactly the same position of an apparent apparition moving into shot and out of shot automatically. Uh, secondly, we've got the door to the church, um, just in case we need to monitor certain things. Uh, we're going to monitor the door. We're also monitoring the graveyard, the rear of the graveyard. And that's because it's been uh, alleged the apparition of somebody tending to one of the graves has been witnessed. Somebody crouching over and bending over and tending to the graves in a cowl. Cool. Okay, two other locations we're looking at. One is where Holly had her first experience this evening. And the final area um, is because, A, that's where most people have witnessed the sound of uh, the horse and the, the cart. I don't know, it's strangely a different place to where Holly witnessed it, but that place. And additionally, because one of the members of the UPIA actually witnessed uh, a, a figure in that area as well. And do we have a camera covering the area where you reported see the time lapse? Yes. Uh, thingy? Yes, that's also uh, covered in, in one of these bottom areas. Okay. It's actually covered in the area where the time slip took place time and slip, sorry. the area where um, Holly had her experience this evening. With our cameras set up, we decided to explore different areas of the church grounds. Holly headed back to where she had heard the horse's hooves earlier that evening, while Steve and Dave focused on the graveyard. Meanwhile, I found what I thought was a nice, quiet little spot at the rear of the church. Within minutes, however, I had one of my weirdest experiences yet as a paranormal investigator. So here, here, here's the crazy thing. I, I wasn't going to say anything because um, I'm the skeptical member of the team, but I've been talking with uh, my co-producer Dale Stevens and he and I have seen the exact same thing at different times in different places so uh, that's you know trained as a lawyer as a story and what I want is confirmation and I've had it and what uh, Dale described and what I've seen uh, out of the corner of my eye and then I looked over it was over in this direction and because the sky there's trees and trees and then there's sky in between which allows you to gives a backdrop of illu some illumination that you can see things and it's, it's weird, I, I would describe it almost in a science fiction sense as if a door opened, so, you know, like this, you know, kind of a door opened, a shape formed, uh, it was totally black and surrounded by the night sky, which is, is slightly in, illuminated from a town off in this direction, I guess. And then as, as soon as it was there, it was, it was gone, maybe a second or, or two seconds, I suppose, afterwards. What I saw, would have been the church is right over here. We've just sort of walked in more or less a straight line. And I was looking right in this direction. And here's the thing that I find a little freaky because I don't know if we'll show it in the episode or not, but Aaron and Dale, my uh, camera and, and, and audio guy here, were here with me earlier where we taped a little stand-up segment where I was talking about Holly and some other things. And this is exactly where I was standing. What I saw, this shadow, this doorway, whatever it was that was opening, happened I right up here. So. It occurred, whatever it was for me, you know, sort of in exactly the same place as I was standing, what guys, two hours ago maybe when we filmed that stand-up segment. And so it was church over here, and it's kind of like open like this. And, and that's the only way I can describe it. My, uh, my co-director, producer Dale Stevens, described it a little differently, but we're talking about the exact same thing. But the way my mind works, it was like a, a temporal, a, a trans-dimensional door opening or something, with just full of blackness, as if the sky blacked out in that, that section. Weird. I gotta tell you, weird. Of all the episodes I've done, weirdest, that and getting um, the thing in the St. Andrews Jail, two weirdest things I've seen. And I would have, I would have pocketed that, pocketed that one because that one was in a, it was just one of those weird things that if Dale hadn't told me that he'd seen the same thing in a different place, different time, I, I might not have said anything. Paul and Dale's sighting of the black void in the night sky was the beginning of a series of unusual events. In a period of 20 minutes, our sound technician Dale Lucky burned through two sets of batteries that should have lasted over two hours. How long were these ones running? 
Uh, they've only been going probably max 20 minutes today. What do you usually get out of them? That first shoot we were on down Leskin? Yeah. I think I didn't change batteries once. And that would have been a couple of hours? Yeah. Wow. So I don't know what's going on, but anyway. I've had to change four times uh, whilst yeah. uh, I've been here. Now it's the same pack, come out of the same packs that I use when I'm at home. And uh, they're usually pretty much good for a week or so, usually about a week. But um, just to the, the location here tonight, I've changed them four times. So. But it is quite common for people to report battery loss mm -hmm. on equipment um, when the new batteries have been placed in them in areas where electric power and all for no one takes place. So. After the troubles with the batteries, Steve reported seeing some unusual lights behind the church. It was this location here, okay, so I came, I came straight over because whilst I was over there looking, I saw what I thought was just a um, temporarily light just on this, just on the edges of these sort of uh, tombs. And um, I came rushing over, trying to account for everybody where everybody was. The only person that wasn't with us was, um, was Dale, uh, and he was at the far end. Um, down in the cemetery down area? Down in the cemetery, near the, cemetery, the, further, the, the lower cemetery, uh, just scouting around that area. I don't know if we've if it was basically just that he, he, he's wandered the torch and it's just caught my eye as it swept this area, I'm not too sure. But um, I talked to Dale and he, he said that he didn't come over to this area with his torch, so. Well, here's the great thing about um, sort of the scientific method. We might be able to recreate That's right, yeah. a torch from that far yeah. down. If we can get Dale see. to go right down to where he was yeah. earlier, yeah. And, uh, and with his lift, it's only a very small torch, yeah, yeah. and with his torch just to flash over in this area, see if it and if we anything. can just go further, uh, just around the corner a bit, and see w if we can see that torch, yeah, then uh, okay. we'll to find out. All right, uh, we'll head down here, and Dale's going to swing his torch, as they say here in Britain, or as we would say his flashlight. Um, back here as if he was walking where he was and we'll see if that creates any light effect over yeah, here. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then we then have we some could, anomaly could perhaps. Have an anomaly. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's uh, go hang out down here. Yep. Well, he's always pointing in that direction. It wouldn't have looked like that. And that that's yeah, like that, that, lights that, the hole. Yeah, because as a flashlight works, the beam goes out yeah. right, and it gets further and further apart the different distance you're away. Yeah. And when Dale was down there and he flashed his light up here, uh, it was too widespread. It was very focused, the light where I saw. Yeah. Um, so I think we could actually went on a little bit strange there. The only thing Dale suggested is that he was shining it down there where there are tombstones. There's a there's a black tombstone down there. He thought maybe it had bounced off that, but that, well, no, we, lo we did that too, and there was nothing yeah. that went up there. After Paul and Steve conducted their experiment, Paul came over and updated me on what had been happening. And then he told me something else that he'd actually been hearing things throughout the entire investigation. Horse hooves. What, what did you hear? Horse hooves, which I heard earlier. You did? Yeah. When? Earlier, when it was still light out. Why didn't you say anything? Uh, same reason I didn't say anything about the thing until the thing. I always wait for corrupt. I would have said something at the end of the night. Are you serious? Yeah, I wasn't sure. I went on this long walk to see if it was the cows over there or anything that could have made the, could have made the, when Ghost Cases returns, Holly and I share an experience that seems to defy explanation. Over there, dark void in the sky over here, clip-clopping horse. I'm going to go over here and see what I can hear. Holly and I conclude our investigation of Shocklack Church. Are you serious? When Paul told me that he had actually heard the sound of the horse's hooves, I was irritated with him for keeping that information to himself. But I was also a little relieved that someone else was hearing the same things I was. And then we heard the sound of the horses again. It was the clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. How'd it go? Clip clop, <laughs> clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. Yeah. No, she, she was like, <sighs> and I was like, yeah, no, I heard it. At, at the same time and then it disappeared didn't want to yell she said low yell and let everybody know I said no because there's cows over there and I wanted to go over and make sure it wasn't a cow rubbing against the metal thing which I had observed earlier um, and and then that just we just heard that and it, that was a different sound 
Yes? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just really cold. That's why I'm oh, sorry. shaking. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you, there, we heard them both within like three minutes of each other, and they're different sounds, right? We heard a clip-clop, clip-clop, and then the metal sound, which we just heard, is different. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Um, Plus it is cold, yeah. Clip-clop, clip-clop. But then it's gone. Oh, no, I, I, I'm with you. I heard it. At this point, Paul and I were running on nervous energy as we tried to figure out if there was a rational explanation for what we were hearing. I don't know, it sounded like horse hooves to me. And I specifically, because I briefly heard, like for a second earlier this evening, I went on this long walk, the same second or two, the clip clop, clip clop, again, sorry, I pocketed it. Yes, I was gonna report it later. <laughs> this is the way I work. But I went on this long walk about like Steve did to go over to suss the area out I saw the cows. I even called one over. It's like, you little cow. You <laughs> called it Yeah, because you, if, you, if you knock the metal, ding, 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 some of the cows will run away in fear. But the curious ones, like they'll Holly. Move, the yeah, they'll move. Did you just call Holly a curious cow? <laughs> no, I just said that, she's curious. <laughs> yeah, right. That works too. Um. This has descended into comedy, which is great. I, I do comedy when I'm nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not nervous. It's just weird, especially with the black things that Dale and I saw. Look, I'm like Kermit the Frog, especially with the black things that Dale and I saw. Uh, but uh, I absolutely, I heard, a clip, I heard it, and it actually lasted for a good, I think, what, six seconds, five or six seconds maybe, give or take. It was a prolonged. It was, it was longer than the first time that I heard it. Me too. Same here. Yeah. All I... All I know is there's sounds, there's like, I think there's some sort of animal crawling about. Uh, there's, uh, as Dave said, the metal thing over there that's in the field. There's whatever that is, which is not what we heard. Those are just natural sounds. And what, what I heard, I can't speak for Ollie, uh, in all seriousness, was an unnatural sound. It Where sounded it? unnatural to me. Hold on. Okay, yeah, I can hear a cow chewing. Yeah, that's, that's those, I've already ruled all those things out from it, like boom, cows chewing, walking, all that stuff. Now, nope, sounded like clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. That's my horse. Anyway, I'm just over there, dark void in sky over here, clip clopping horse. I'm going to go over here and see what I can hear. Fantastic. I'll scream if I hear the clip clopping of the horse again. Excellent. Well, I'll scream, but uh, it will notify people in a professional fashion. Moving on. What happened to us that night at Shocklack Church? I still don't know. We don't have any photos of relevance, and our audio and cameras didn't pick up anything anomalous. But we all saw and heard things that we cannot explain. It's almost as if all night something was playing games with us. Shocklack is the type of investigation that you never want to see end. I can understand why my friend Dave Sadler has been drawn there over and over again, because the location is genuinely haunting and truly unforgettable. Just like black things in the sky and light anomalies over here and horse hooves. Ooh, this is, this is, uh, and, and, and Dale asked me, um, you know, he's like, do you, are you scared or anything? I said, no, I'm not scared. I'm jacked up. This is, this is exciting. This is fascinating. This is uh, cool in a weird way. Um, because this is the kind of thing, if you're, if you're doing um, UFO research or any paranormal research or anything, it's like being, you know, like being a lawyer. You can read it all in the books, but until you get in a courtroom, until you get there in front of a judge with a witness and everything, uh, you don't actually know how it works. And um, the same thing's true with paranormal investigation. You could do 50 of these and have nothing happen. And then you can come to a place like this, and you can have multiple sort of things happening all in one night and you realize you know what the 50 times where nothing happened it's worth it to get the one time where you go to a place and whatever's happening uh it's interesting it's anomalous whether it's paranormal i don't know but it's certainly anomalous and then you can do things like the uh you know the with the light thing that steve saw and try a little experiment and rule things out that's the way it should be done and that is exciting <laughs> <laughs>